back on the streets out early today. It's like 7 o'clock in the morning. This is like very, very early. <laughs> Especially for Argentina. People do not get up this early usually. So it's like, the streets are pretty quiet. Uh, and why are we up early? We're up early because today we're going to go try and hop on a bus to get to a place outside the city. Uh, we're going to Alta Gracia. And uh, we're going to Alta Gracia. It's like a town, maybe like an hour, hour bus ride outside the city. And uh, we want to go there because there is uh, there's a house there of a person who uh, is a very important historical figure. Like uh, like Juan Perón, also a very controversial historical historical figure, uh, and that is uh, one Ernesto Che Guevara. So most people they know Che Guevara because of the Cuban Revolution, and uh, a lot of people who don't know they think he's Cuban, but uh, he's not. He was born right here in Argentina, in Rosario. And even though we're not in Rosario, we're in Cordoba. Uh, there's a house where he was, uh, when he was a kid, he grew up there. Because Che had asthma. And his parents moved him out of Rosario to this like house out in the countryside. Out next to, uh, uh, like outside of Cordoba here. Because uh, I guess the weather was uh, better for his asthma. And so, uh, so this is the house where he grew up and they turned it into a museum. So we're gonna go check it out. But in order to get there, we have to, uh, we gotta get on a bus. And not the normal like city bus. We gotta get on a micro. It's a weird name, but that's what they call buses uh, that go like outside the city to other cities. So we're going down to the bus terminal. At first I didn't really know how to get uh, to this place, Alta Gracia. I wanted to go, I knew this, this house was out there. And uh, the other day I was in a like a caf uh, cafe, like a coffee shop, and I was talking to the women that work there, and we were just chatting about, you know, like, what I'm doing here, where I'm from, that kind of stuff. And I told them, yeah, yeah, I do want to get outside of the city if I can. And, uh, and they were like, oh, yeah, yeah, you should go check this place out, you should go check this place out. And I said, ah, I want to go to Alta Gracia. And they said, oh, Casa de Che. I said, yeah, yeah, Casa de Che. But uh, I don't know how to get there. And they immediately said, oh, you go to the omnibus terminal. And, uh, hmm, I hope I'm walking the right direction here. I think I am. I guess we're about to find out. We're going to find out in about, like, ten minutes if I've gone the wrong direction or not. But I think I'm going the right direction. All right, so we're in the omnibus terminal. Terminal of the omnibus. And, um, I think I might be in the wrong place. Because, uh, most of the signs here for all the bus companies, they have, like, they're saying they're going to other cities, like, far, far away, like Mendoza, Salta, Rosario, and places like that, so uh, this may not actually be the spot. There is another terminal further down the road, Terminal Nueva, and that might be the spot for, like, more local buses. I'm not sure. I'm just going to go up and ask someone here if, if they got a bus that goes out to uh, Alta Gracia, so let's find out. Uh, okay, so I was right. This is the wrong terminal. They said uh, it's the other terminals. Terminal Nueva, which is down the street. So we're going to go down there. But uh, before we do, there's a nice view of the bus terminal. If you're ever here. Lots of shops. Lots of bus companies over here, by the way. So if you ever do come to Cordoba and you need to get to like another city and you don't want to fly, this is the spot. All these different bus companies here. See? They'll all take you to where you need to go. Probably for much cheaper than flying. So anyway, there you go. A little bonus. Get to see the inside of the terminal down it was because we went to the wrong place. Okay.
Uh, we'll get to the terminal on the way, then we'll check in. Okay, now we are in the right terminal. This is uh, the new terminal. And I guess this is where buses for like more local trips go. Yeah. Yeah, I'm seeing the, the like on the signs here for the bus companies. These are all more local, like more local towns. So I guess we just gotta find a bus company and I don't know which one we're gonna pick, who knows? There's so many. I guess we're just gonna pick one at random and uh, hopefully they'll take us where we need to go. I'm actually gonna put my camera away here because there's a lot of people, it's kind of sketchy in here and I don't wanna have my camera out right now. So we'll take it out again once we're on the bus. We got a round trip ticket. It was like 1,800 pesos for a round trip ticket, which is pretty cheap. Um, it's like $1.80. Uh, so we're on a nice comfy coach bus. Take a look. Nice coach bus. There's uh, places, you know, up top for luggage, but this is a pretty short trip. Like I said, I think it's only about an hour to get out there. And then uh, we got our return ticket, so... Uh, once we get out there, I'm not sure how far away uh, the the house, the museum is from the train or from the bus station, but it can't be that far. I, I looked on the map; it's not that big of a town. And um, if it turns out it is really far, like like when we went out and saw La Quinta de Juan de Barón in San Vicente, we could probably find like a remis service or something that'll drive us out there. So I feel pretty good about it. All right, we are in Alta Gracia. Nice little town. Very beautiful out here. Bus station's back that way. And uh, we're heading to, or at least we're heading to where I think the, uh, we're heading to where I think the house is. And uh, I don't know. I don't know if we're going the right direction. Uh, I think we're going the right direction. So on the way up this hill to get where we're going, I saw this thing, and I don't know what it is, <laughs> but I wanna go check it out. Some sort of monument, cool statue. In El Año 1964, se realiza en Altagracia el Congreso Interamericano de la CECLA, Organismo Dependiente de la OEA, con el fin. You know what? I don't understand what this is. I don't know what those acronyms are. Para el intercambio comercial y llegar al mercado. Commune. So it's like a monument to trade between Latin American countries, it looks like. Because Mercado Comunio, Comun Latino, Latino Americano is like communal Latin American market. Para el intercambio, trade, commercial trade. Hmm. All these, uh, oh yeah, okay. <laughs> this makes more sense now. All these flags are not, at first I thought they were like provincial flags of, um, of Argentina, but they're not. They're different countries, see? Ecuador. Uh, which is this one? This is, uh, oh, Venezuela, okay. Colombia. Paraguay. Peru. And then of course, because we're in Argentina, Argentina, in the center. Bolivia, Uruguay. Brazil, Chile, 
in Kuba. Pretty cool. Pretty cool monument. Like, kind of like out here in the middle of nowhere, but it's pretty neat. Plaza de las Americas. And uh, CECLA is Comisión Especial de Coordinación Latino America. So the Special Commission of Coordination of Latin America. Cool. Now, the interesting thing about Che is there's that photo. You see it on uh, pretty much everything. Refrigerator magnets, t-shirts, posters, uh, that famous photo of him. It's called uh, Guerrillero Heroico, I think. Heroic Gorilla. Anyway, it's, uh, it was taken at uh, like a, uh, a memorial. There was a, um, a freighter, La Cubre, and it was carrying um, like arms and weapons and whatnot for the revolution. And it blew up out in the Havana Bay. A bunch of people died. I think, um, if I remember correctly, um, Castro blamed the CIA, which, I mean, <laughs> Castro blamed the CIA for a lot of stuff, and rightfully so, because they were doing a lot of stuff, but um, anyway, there was a memorial for that, and that's where that picture was taken. And uh, it's probably, I don't know, probably like the most famous picture ever really, when you think about it, and uh, it's ironic because Che was, uh, you know, known for being a communist revolutionary, and that, that photo's been put on t-shirts and, you know, like I said, refrigerator magnets and all kinds of stuff, and uh, the amount of money that people have probably made off of that photo is pretty insane when you think about it. Okay, so we arrived, we found it. Museo Casa del Che. And this is it. So this is where he lived from 1935 to 1943. So 35, he was born in 1928. So that would make him seven years old, six or seven years old when he moved here and lived until 1943. So, so his like childhood and teenage years when he lived here. And this is the house here. Vishanaidia. Vishanaidia, I guess, is the name. Yeah, the name of the house. And they did. They lived here. Alta Gracia, because they were looking to alleviate his asthma. Ernesto. So Che, of course, is a nickname. Uh, his, his actual name is Ernesto. And uh, his father's name was Ernesto also. Like I said, he was born here or in Rosario in Argentina in 1928. And a lot of people think that, uh, that Che was born in Cuba, that he's Cuban, because he was so uh, closely you know, involved in the Cuban Revolution. But uh, that's not the case. That's not the case. He was born here in Argentina. And, um, you know, it's interesting that we saw that, um, I'm gonna go over here. Nice little shady spot here, because uh, it is starting to get pretty hot out here. I'm starting to sweat my hoyables off. Anyway, it's uh, ironic that we, uh, that we saw, or it's interesting that we saw that, um, that uh, like monument over there to the uh, commercial cooperation of trade between uh, the Latin American countries. So that's actually, I don't know, it's ironic because one, Che was a communist revolutionary and that's like a monument to capitalism. But, um, but also Che, uh, one of his core beliefs once he, um, once he became a revolutionary was uh, that Latin American countries all have a shared history and they, they all like would need to have a shared future. And that future would be anti-imperialism. Revolution against uh, capitalist imperialism and 
the, the capitalist imperialism that he was talking about was the United States. And now he wasn't always uh, a communist. He was actually a revolutionary, essentially, before he was a communist. Um, he believed that uh, revolution was, um, was uh, the way to throw off imperialism. And he actually like developed these beliefs when he was in college. He was in college to be uh, in medical school, to be a physician at the University of Buenos Aires. And he took uh, two famous motorcycle trips, um, the, the story of which is recorded in his diaries, the motorcycle diaries. They were published way later in the 90s, but this was back in the, like the 19, uh, 1950s, early 1950s. And he took two motorcycle trips around um, Latin America. The first one just in Argentina, in the northern parts of Argentina, and the second one in through all different countries in Latin America. And he saw uh, the poverty that people were living in, especially rural um, uh, people living in rural areas. And one of the, it, it's something that, uh, that inspired him to, um, to become a revolutionary. And so he started going to, after, after he graduated as a physician, um, he, he decided to, uh, to not be a physician. He decided to, be, to involve himself in politics and involve himself in revolutionary movements in different countries in Latin America. And he went to a few different countries before he eventually ended up in Guatemala. And he ended up in Guatemala at a very, very um, important time for Guatemala. Uh, in the 40s, 1944, I believe, uh, there was a revolution in Guatemala. And the people that came to power um, after maybe six years or so, they, there was an election and the uh, president who was elected was a guy named Jacobo Arbenz. Um, and Arbenz was, well, he was painted in the United States as a communist, but he really wasn't. Um, he, he did want to redistribute land, uh, which is a very sort of a communist thing to do. Um, but the, the key, uh, the most important thing about that was he was trying to redistribute land, uncultivated land that was owned by the United Fruit Company. And if you know anything about the history of Latin America, you know that the United Fruit Company is basically like kind of the most evil company in all of Latin America. I mean, it, it, it's very, very bad. The history of um, the control that they've had over governments in Latin America is uh, long and pretty horrible. The term Banana Republic is not just a clothing line, it refers to countries in Central America where the United Fruit Company owned so much land and had so much power over the governments that they were able to um, use that power to engineer coups, um, and, and Guatemala was one of those places. So in Guatemala, 1952, the uh, CIA engineered a coup by uh, backing a revolutionary force that overthrew uh, Arbenz. And um, the, the thing about it was Che was there during that time and he saw what happened. Um, and that is really what inspired him to, uh, to become a revolutionary, essentially to abandon um, his medical training to abandon being a physician and to become a revolutionary and what he what he witnessed was specifically United States involvement uh, the Secretary of State John Foster Dulles before he was Secretary of State was a lawyer and he was actually a lawyer that um, negotiated the deal for the United Fruit Company to purchase large plots of land um, in uh, Guatemala and so when Arbenz was nationalizing and redistributing the land, 
the uh, United Fruit Company was basically the the they they stood to lose the most, and so I don't think it's really a coincidence that uh, that um, John Foster Dulles, who was Secretary of State at the time of the CIA-backed coup, um, you know, there's just a there's a lot of connections there. So, and Che saw the same thing and uh, came to the same conclusions. Now he was not able to uh, foment revolution in um, in Guatemala, but uh, later in Cuba, after he met up with Fidel Castro, um, he was able to. And that's a whole other story. But before we get into that, I think we should go into the museum here and take a look around because this is going to be all of his uh, his childhood memories before he was a revolutionary. Um, and I think it'll be interesting to see all of these things. Okay, so luckily they have explanations in English here. So this will not be like our normal, uh, this won't be our normal where we don't understand anything that's going on. Um, so this is, uh, this is his room, it looks like. This is little Che's room. Some pictures of him from when he was young. There's a picture of him when he was young. Some of his toys, scooters, his desk. And uh, Che's family actually was quite wealthy, um, which is ironic, you know, because he went on to become a communist revolutionary. But um, quite wealthy, quite educated. And Che read a lot of books when he was young. I have some books here, some childhood books. Here's some pictures of the family. But yeah, it was said that the, they had like 3,000 books in the house and Che read a lot of them. So he was quite well educated. And, um, you know, he did attend college, became a physician, but he was really well educated in other, um, other fields outside of medicine. His parents encouraged him to, uh, to learn a lot about politics, about things that were going on in the world. His father had uh, close ties to the uh, Republican, the Republicans in, um, that's the, uh, the uh, Communist Party in Spain during the Spanish Civil War. So from a young age, you know, Che was exposed to, to lots of different um, political thought and his parents even though they were pretty wealthy um, his parents were uh, were, were ver they were very um, uh, they, they followed the ideals of social justice and they instilled that in Che from a pretty young age Here's a typewriter and it's like a some sort of medical text. Oh, and this is the bicycle I was talking about. So this is a, a bicycle that Che fitted um, a motor to. And he took this on this trip all through northern Argentina. You can see all the different cities that he went to. It looks like a, a news article about his trip. I think this is uh, El Grafico. I think this actually might be the college newspaper for University of Buenos Aires. There's a picture of Che on his trip. And more pictures here of Che with his bicycle. Now that was the first trip that he took. And his second trip 
Looks like they have the motorcycle here. So he took a trip with um, with a friend of his from college, Alberto Granado. You can see his name there on the placard. And uh, this was a much, much larger trip. He took uh, an actual motorcycle. This is, of course, the trip which he wrote uh, a diary for, later published in the 90s, later became a film called The Motorcycle Diaries. Actually, quite a good film. If you haven't seen it, you should. And here are some, looks like some of the actual pages from the diary. I, I absolutely cannot read Chase handwriting. Also, it's in Spanish. So... But if you do want to read the entire diary, the whole thing has been published. Motorcycle Diaries. There's Che with Alberto. This picture also with Alberto. This is a, a pretty famous picture. Obviously not the most famous picture of Jay. We all know what the most famous picture of Jay is. But um, So I guess this room that we're in was his sister's room. Celia and Ana Maria, his sisters. But of course now it's sort of the room for the motorcycle. Here's Che shooting a rifle. This picture I recognize. This is actually um, when Che met up with the um, uh, Cuban revolutionaries, Ca Castro and, and his crew. They, uh, they were in Mexico and they got arrested if I remember correctly, and this is like a picture of Che at the jail, like uh, after having been arrested, if I, if I remember correctly. And uh, Castro used his connections with the Soviet Union to uh, get them released. This down here on the bottom, this one is, oh, let's see. Uh, this is in Peru. Oh no, this is in Bolivia. Yeah, these are the miners in Bolivia. So, you know, like I said, when Che was traveling around all over Latin America, um, he he would meet, you know, miners and farmers who who lived in in really really poor conditions, and it's one of the things that inspired him to uh, to become a revolutionary. Take out the check out the next room. We'll leave this on screen and you can pause it if you want to take a look to read. thing that I do like, they also have braille cards so that if uh, people who are visually impaired come here, they can, uh, they can read as well. Chess set here. Che with the family. And this is after the revolution. This is the Conference of uh, Inter-American Economy Social Organization the, of the American States. Here's Che with Salvador Allende from Chile. Yeah, 
And Jay actually, afterwards, after the Cuban Revolution was successful, he traveled all around the world um, attempting to spread revolution to other countries and meeting also with other, um, uh, like other communist leaders and revolutionary leaders. He went to Africa, to Congo, was meeting with Mao in China. This is when he was Minister of Industry in Cuba. In India, in Indonesia, Japan, here's a bathroom. I think it's always interesting. This is just an aside. I think it's always interesting to see the bathroom in places like this when they've preserved um, these such places just because like, I don't know, that's that's like, <laughs> you know, everybody poops, right? They made a book about it. <laughs> and that's that's just like such a very personal thing. You know, when we saw that, when we went to Casa, um, uh, Casa de Dios, we went to um, uh, Maradona's house just to like see the bathrooms and they had pictures. It was kind of funny. They had pictures of Maradona like, in the bathtub no picture of Che in the bathtub here but uh, still I do think it's it's interesting to see it sort of like uh, really humanizes people you know do we can go through oh no wait I gotta follow the uh, here we go follow they have these little arrows on the floor so that you know which direction to go voila oh and here it is this these are military fatigues that Che was always seen wearing This is his journal, looks like 1967. So this is like when he was in Bolivia. This is right before he died. He was he was killed he was killed in 1967. It's really crazy to see like the actual handwriting, his actual handwriting. I mean, I don't understand. I can't I, can't really read it. I wouldn't understand it really anyway, but I think it's always kind of neat to see someone's actual handwriting. There's, there's Castro. And this is Jay. Yeah, this is in Congo, up here, 1965. Like I said, he, um, he went all around, uh, all around the world, basically working with revolutionary groups in different countries. This is all from his time in Congo. Looks like these are letters, letters between between Che and Castro. That's the famous photo, or at least part of it. Yeah. 
This is Bolivia 9. La Hiera, Bolivia 9, 10, 67. So this is, La Higuera is where he died. And this 9, 10, oh, so the date, uh, I mistook it because uh, I'm used to looking at dates in the American format, but this is, this is 10, 9, 67, October 9th, 1967. That's the date that he died. So Che was, um, was working with Bolivian revolutionaries in 67 and um, the CIA had organized a um, like a, a, a group of counter-revolutionaries who uh, were able to kidnap Che. I believe he was betrayed by one a member of the revolutionary group that he was working with, and they uh, they captured him. They took him to La Higuera, which is the village in Bolivia, and he was executed. And when they they executed him they were careful to shoot him in like the arms and the legs basically so that they could make it look like he died in battle so that they could cover uh the story of him you know being executed either way he became a martyr for for revolutionaries you know all over the world yeah and here's the story of it. September 1967, AP News Agency reported the Bolivian army had begun persecution of Che. On October 8th, the guerrilla group is surrounded. Che is wounded in the legs, captured and transferred. October 9th, 1967, he shot to death at 1.10 p.m. by Officer Mario Taran, who obeys orders from Bolivian, Bolivian President René Barrientos. His body was found 30 years later in a mass grave in Bolivia, and they buried him in Cuba, Santa Clara. Looks like this is, what is this in the center? Passport? Oh, false passport. Oh, this is a false passport that he used. Identifying him as Uruguayan Adolfo Mena, 1966. Huh. picture of Che like in disguise to get into Bolivia so this is this is the false passport and the identity that he used to sneak into Bolivia this is really fascinating all right we're gonna go back back through the bathroom that we saw here. And then the tour looks like it goes outside. So we can take a look. Oh, here's the kitchen. Also like seeing the kitchens too. Bathrooms and kitchens. Those are kind of kind of cool. We saw the kitchen in uh, La Quinta de Juan and Eva Perón. We saw the kitchen in Casa de Dios. Now we're seeing Che Guevara's kitchen when he was a kid. This is Che's mother? Mother? No, wait. Che's grandmother? Oh. Korea, el año 1935, cuando Rosario ingresó a la casa de la familia Guevara, Doña Rosario González de López, para dedicarse a las tareas de la cocina. Oh, so I guess she, maybe she was like a nanny 
Yeah, and she came with to take care of Che. You know, like I like I mentioned, um, <laughs> his family was quite wealthy. Um, he was not, even though he was a communist revolutionary, sort of uh, attempting to to liberate the the poorest of poor people in Latin America. He he himself was raised pretty wealthy. Wood burning stove. So he used to spend time in here when his asthma attacks prevented him from going outside or going to school. Oh. And Doña Rosario take care of him using home remedies, aromatic herbs from the area. Statue of Jay with his cigar on the bench. And his painting, Young Che and Grown Che. We're here, here on the front porch. The bust of Che, here, Cuban flag. Argentine flag. Like I said, sometimes people, people who don't know, think that uh, that Che was from Cuba, but he wasn't. Right here in Argentina, but he is so important to you know the history of Cuba that they have him with the Cuban flag right there. And this is uh, this sculpture is called Ernestito. That was Che's nickname because his father was also named Ernesto, so he was Ernestito, little Ernesto. There was another sculpture that was similar to this um, inside. But this one sits out in front, on the front porch. And I have seen a lot of people taking pictures with this, uh, with this sculpture. Ernestito. Well, I think we've seen, we've seen everything there is to see here at the museum. Take a walk back down, back down towards the bus station. But we can talk about that museum. That museum is uh, very interesting. Uh, it cost, 500 pesos uh, to get in. There are some other museums in the area which we may or may not visit um, that you can also get access to. I think you can like sort of buy a, a, a package and, um, and you'll end up getting access for cheaper, but 500 pesos is very, very affordable. It's like 50 cents to get into that museum. And that museum is well, well worth it if you're, if you're interested in history. And you know, regardless of what your political beliefs are, whether you, uh, you know, you're a left wing, right wing, or whatever, you absolutely can't deny how important uh, Che Guevara was, like historically. He's just a very, very important historical figure. He's a very complicated, um, complicated figure. He's a very controversial figure. He has a very complicated and controversial legacy. So, I will say, this is a really, really nice neighborhood up here, Alta Gracia. It's a very beautiful town. Um, you can see the houses in the neighborhood around where the Casa de Che is. I mean, very nice. And uh, it's not too far from the bus station. About a, I don't know, five or ten minute walk. So, I would say that it's worth it if you're if you're interested in history and it's something that uh, and you're out here in Cordoba. Bus ride is about 45 minutes from the city, and it only cost me you know a dollar eighty to get out here round trip dollar eighty. Um, so you could do the whole thing, come out here and see the museum and get back all told for, you know, what, like 250 Not bad. Not bad. So if you're looking for something to do and you want to get outside of city of Cordoba, this is something that I think is definitely worth it. Definitely worth it. 
Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. I forgot to film an outro, so uh, this is what you get. Hope you enjoyed it. See you in the next video.